Oh, man. You come to a museum like this one and you have giant dinosaur bones that are mounted as skeletons, but I think a lot of people don't really know how it gets from the ground to a giant skeleton like this. But that is what we're here to find out today. Building a Dinosaur 101. Today, I'm at the paleontology lab trying to figure out how bones like this come to be. And to do that, I'm with Lindsay Zana, the lab's director and a pretty hardcore paleontologist. People probably have in their head this idea of how you take a dinosaur out of the ground and bring it into the museum. Are most people right? Well, I think a lot of people's perception about how paleontology is done, how we find animals, how we dig them up, comes from Hollywood. Someone's laying on the ground with a little brush, brushing away a perfect dinosaur skeleton. And we all wish it was that way. We don't often find complete skeletons. In fact, that's really, really, really rare. And we don't use, usually, tiny little brushes or tiny little tools. We use jack hammers and rock saws and picks and shovels and all kinds of crazy equipment because getting dinosaur bones out of the ground is really hard work. Clearly, Lindsay likes hard work. Now, the site that they found is in Utah, a place they call Crystal Geyser. And it's extremely mysterious because it's a mass grave site, meaning that a whole bunch of dinosaurs all died here at one time, and nobody has any idea what happened. We really don't understand why the bones are all buried in one place. Um, there are everything from tiny little babies to adults at this site. Now, when Lindsay and the crew find where a dinosaur might be, they don't excavate it on site. Instead, they put it in plaster jackets and bring it back to the lab. The only thing is that these are really, really heavy. So these jackets can weigh anywhere from 100 to 3 or 400 pounds or even more. And when you're 12 miles from civilization, the only way to get something like this out of the quarry is to carry it yourself. This one has experienced a lot of good field work already. This is one season right here. <laughs> Once they get it out, they bring it into the lab. And I've kind of whittled down the rock and taken it out of the field jacket, um, but the process of doing that involved putting a lot of glue on this specimen. What they end up finding in the jackets is anybody's guess. Sometimes it's just a couple of bones they have to put together. Sometimes the bones are more whole, and sometimes they find some real gems. Basically, we have no idea what's actually physically inside of this because it's all covered with rock. But as the volunteers were preparing through it, they noticed very early on this impression of dinosaur skin. Then Lindsay took me to the displays. She showed me that some of the parts are the real fossilized bones, but others, like the giant skull here, are way too heavy to put on a museum specimen. So that's just a sneak peek into some of the basics of what a paleontologist actually does. Stay tuned though, because we have a lot more dinosaur videos to come. So remember, if you like what we're doing, watch more of our videos and subscribe to our feed. Oh, and a big shout out to Olay for helping make this video possible. 